All right, so that's recording. So um, kia ora everybody and thanks so much for your time uh, for being here. So I'm Sophie Hoskins, not Fiona McDonald, as it um, says on the screen. Um, and I'm the Eons Kaiarahi, so um, basically here to uh, support outdoor teachers um, with whatever they need, mainly curriculum, but um, anything I can find find people to help you or um, if I can't answer the question myself. Um, and this conversation or this, this Zoom sessions come about from um, from um, our Facebook page. There was a um, question on there around junior outdoor ed and um, somebody asked um, about a junior outdoor program and there was heaps of interest in it so I thought well let's just have a bit of a zoom corridor and those that um, want to can share what they're doing and we can record it and that way there's a bit of information out there ready to go so um, tonight we've got um, about six to eight people that are going to share what they're doing in their programs um, so if we kind of aim for those of you that are sharing if you just aim for around the five minute mark it doesn't have to be five minutes but I thought you know just a, a brief overview of um, kind of the structure of your program how it's assessed um, and or linked to the curriculum um, and any other interesting bits you want to add in um, and then we'll have up to five minutes kind of questions afterwards so if you've got any specific questions for that person um, feel free to type them in the questions as they're talking and then I can just read them out afterwards or we'll just ask them um, once they've finished sharing. And then at the end, um, when everyone's kind of shared uh, their program, then we, um, if anyone's keen, we can have more discussion around the bigger picture side of things um, or just generic questions or no one wants to yeah, put anything out there. Um, we can do that and yeah just just leave as you need to because I know um, lots of you are busy this is going to be recorded so um, just yeah come and go as you need and thank you very much for your time this evening um, I know you're all super busy at the moment and um, it's not easy to sit down in front of a computer after a day at work and a week at work so thank you very much and um, so we were going to start we were going to start with Ben and Erin, but Ben is not here yet. So um, if we start with Emily, is that all right with you, Emily? Um, she is going yeah, no to be awesome. Thank you. Hi, Emily. So um, hi, Emily is Emily Page from Marlborough Girls College. And um, they have just started a program this year called Adventure Marlborough with the year 10s. Yeah, that's right. Cool. So um, I will I'll leave it to you. All right, um, going first, it's always a little bit harder with what sort of um, details to um, go into. So I'll kind of keep it brief and then I'll, I'll go back into the different topics if people want any more information on what we did maybe um, in those topics. Um, so the course itself is a semester long and students can opt into it. We've done a whole load of changing up with our junior curriculum to make some of the other courses um, co-curricular. So this one is just a Luckily, a standalone um, by itself, but it does mean that it's a, an opt-in for most students. So we actually get a real good bunch of kids who come through the course rather than it's um, a compulsory for everyone. And we end up battling with um, some of those kids who maybe don't want to do some more of the um, adventurous stuff. So that's a positive um, for us. Um, so some of the main topics um, that we do are um navigation um which includes kind of orientating maps grid references um, we look at the multi star compass we look at bearings and with each kind of little topic that we do we try and make sure that there's an activity at the end of it which is our practical that links to what we've done um, at school so we do a day trip over at blackjack track um, which kind of is a little bit of a starter it's about a two-hour walk so it really gets us to kind of know the girls a little bit um, as to whether their fitness is up to it and then we can extend it for another two hours doing another loop in um, or we can just get the bus from there so first one in gives us that little bit of extra info um, following on from that we then do a full day and overnight uh, camp and tramp which we do from um, Mamarangi through to Picton which is the link track normally um, and then another option is doing it from a place called Polaris Bridge. So they take in everything for the night and they're expected to carry 
um, everything that they've taken. So we kind of, you know, talk with them about what the basics are, what the necessities are, and then maybe what are a few optional extras. And they soon work out pretty quickly with the weight of their pack that they want to be a little bit more selective about what they're bringing. Um, we do a climbing unit. So we're lucky that the youth trust down here has a portable climbing wall. So we do uh, rope work with them, not um, how to use a belay system. And then we get the wall delivered to us at school for um, two days. So each class um, gets it twice, um, which is pretty cool. Um, what else do we do? We do orienteering units, um, which is kind of a little bit of like road gaming, a little bit of kind of adventure racing. We get the girls to do one of our courses around school. Uh, we also get the girls to create their own course based on clues like around the school, landmarks and things where they can go kind of solve a little puzzle um, at those locations. Um, the main thing that we're kind of prepping them for and getting them ready for is a four day trip out to Fenua ET camp um, where they do all of the stuff, I guess, that we as teachers probably wouldn't feel so comfortable taking that amount of kids out um, to do. So there they do co-steering, they do rafting, they do um, climbing and what am I missing? Caving, um, which is pretty cool. Then kind of high and low ropes and kind of ABLs just to get us there um, on site, uh, which we've only just come back from uh, last week. So that was pretty cool to go there for the first time. And then we kind of finish off with a unit around um, water safety, which then we can link back to some of the water activities that we did um, at Fenua ET. Um, with lockdown in uh, this semester, we also missed out on a couple of our other topics that we had in, um, which was something around like leadership and group dynamics, and also a unit based on survival skills. But with losing those kind of three weeks, we didn't get into too much detail. Um, on those this time. Uh, so I guess that's the content um, of our course in a bit of a, a nutshell. Uh, we meet three times a week and we've got a fortnightly um, timetable. Um, and it was six full days out of school um, for that program. Awesome, thanks Emily. Um, does anyone have any questions uh, at the moment? Um, for Emily, around that. Yeah, I'm just curious about the water safety. What were some of the things that you guys went over? Um, so we look at uh, tides and waves, so the different types of uh, waves that you can find at a beach and probably which ones are uh, safer to go out in and which ones you kind of want to stand on the beach and look a bit um, more pretty. Uh, how tides work, we looked and included the water care code. Um, we take them into one of our local rivers and we do river crossings. And then we look at some very like basic first aid stuff around kind of hypothermia and what we do if we kind of got cold as part of um, the river crossings. And we also kind of look into the history for um, the Māori significance of water and kind of do some of the, the local stuff around our local rivers as part of that. Sounds like they've got an uh, awesome program where they're really um, learning lots of lots of useful skills, eh? Lucky girls. Hey, and it's hey, nice that most of it's immediately on the doorstep too, which is cool. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Tony. Uh, anyway, can I ask, did you do particular activities to do with the Māori Star Compass? So like, how did you engage with that? Um, so this is probably something that I'd like to spend a little bit um, more time on. So it was mainly just um, an introduction to what it was as part of looking at kind of alternative um, kind of compasses so um, yeah so that one I'd need to develop a little bit further um, being the first time that we'd kind of ran it it was just kind of running with you know what kind of the content was and then the second time that we will run it then we'll start to unpack them a little bit more and kind of come up with some activity so yeah we don't have um, I guess a cool activity to go through it was more kind of uh, an instructional on this is what it is this is how it would be used type activity um, it, yeah Awesome. Any more questions there for Emily? Um, Emily, with the trip to Fenua Iti, that's presumably um, kind of expected that they all participate in that as part of the course. Is that how it works? Uh, yep. Yep. Uh, and, and do they pay to go and do that? Um, so Marlborough Girls College itself is a, they opted into the donation scheme. 
um, program. Um, so we kind of on our, our forms, we tell, we tell parents what it's actually costing to send the student and it's uh, an optional donation if they would like to pay some of it, none of it or all of it. But as we're a donation school, if a kid or a family decides that they don't want to pay anything, they still go and they get the full experience, the same as um, you know, any student who decided to pay some, none or all. Oh yeah, so, so would the school be prepared to cover it if they all said that they weren't gonna pay? Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, now we're we're pretty lucky from that respect, and yeah. Awesome. Any other questions there? All right. Thanks so much, Emily, and um, thank you for being so willing to share uh, what you're doing and going first. Um, That's all. Cool. Thank you. We're we're going to move on to uh, Joel Dickinson now from Ottawa College. Um, he's going to do a quick. Uh, share with us is that newborn baby is starting to wake up and um, he's going to share with us a bit about the year nine and ten programs um which it looks like they're four week units so i will pass it over to you joel yeah hopefully my internet's been kind of in and out at the moment so hopefully it's all right and my brain's kind of in and out at the moment as well so hopefully that's all right but we'll see how we go hey um kia ora everyone um I'm, I'm joel from audio college um i'm the teacher in charge um of um, Alderid at um, the college there. We've got an amazing senior unit. We have over seven classes in only year 12 and 13, um, but um, we don't have much in the junior program. Uh, we are a huge school, we're over 2000. So, um, you know, doing any kind of thing in year nine and 10, it's, you know, you're looking at 500 kids taken out um, for if you use everyone. So what we've decided that in our PE um, program in, in our year nine and 10 is that we have two four week slots of outdoor education. And basically what they are is a little taster um, of what the senior program is about. We're very fortunate that if you are familiar with Uber, we have a huge massive estuary which runs it around the back. Um, literally we are under, I think we're a meter underwater. So if tsunami were gone. Um, and then we have an ocean which is, you know, five, 10 minute walk away, which does get a bit of a swell, um, not too big, but enough to have a bit of fun. And so we've got, heaps to um, work with. Um, when the students come into Audio College and they, they, they become a um, student, they sign a little waiver saying that um, the beach is part of our college and that they can go down and use the water. So there's no ram forms and um, stuff every time we go to the beach, which is very fortunate for us. Um, I am gonna quickly just share um, my screen. This is, oh, I've, I think you've disabled it. So if I don't know if I can do it. If you can't share it, it's absolutely fine. I can just verbal it. No, it won't let me. It's all good. I'll just verbalize it. I've got it next to me, so it's all fine. Um, so in our year nine, so basically our year nine units, between a year nine and 10, we we're trying um, to touch base on everything that we will be looking for um, in the senior program. Um, but also um, looking at those underlying concepts, um, although we may do something around knots or um, water or whatever it is, there's all the underlying um, concepts of interaction, um, you know, leadership, um, you know, tolerance, all these kind of things that so there's we use um what we have around us and we basically have all these underlying key concepts to work with so our year nine you know i've got roughly in front of me so i'm going to roll through it um so the first week is working as a team where we do like icebreakers trust you know common avls um we also have this very unique um unit that i haven't seen anywhere in any other college um and i've been running it for over like 12 years now um, and we run survivor area literally like the program um where we vote kids out it is like we have buffs we have you know you name it it is there and it is it is amazing the if you ever got 10 minutes, go to YouTube, um, Survivor Audio. There's an amazing video of the students there um, and me talking about it. And it is it is something very special. Um, and you know what? It's 100% free and there's no trips involved anyway. Um, anyway, it's, but we do a little taste of Survivor in year nine. Um, we also look at um, building in the wild, which basically knots, um, building shelters, um, building hammocks, um, just kind of climbing trees, um, just simple stuff like that, which is all free, it's all easy, we can do it within a period. 
Um, we look at one where we call it, it's cold out there, which is the third week. Um, and it's basically awareness, you know, like clothing, we, we you know, we dress them and we, um, and then we spray them down with a hose and we take the temperature and we look at the difference of, you know, what is good equipment. And this stuff is so easy. We just kind of pack it up and go like next, next lesson, bring thermals. We'll put someone in a wetsuit. We'll get, there's always someone brave that just wants to wear a pair of speedos and it's great. You know, look at the difference between the temperature. Um, and this is all stuff which builds on knowledge for when they're senior years. Um, and then the last week, we have a bit of a fun week where we start um, building fires. Um, we're going to build fires in our backyard, look at building fires and cooking a meal, which is a great thing um, to end with. That's our year nine one, our year 10 one. Um, like I said, we are right next to the estuary, um, and which is um, building on, I think it was Emily that talked about water safety. And yeah, we do like a survival swim. So literally we, we go down to the estuary on an incoming tide, dress them fully clothed. Um, this unit as well is, is around August. Um, so it's freezing, like cold, cold, cold. And we kind of throw them in there, you know, look at um, how, to, how to just keep afloat. We do have, we can do river crossing with the estuary because it's all so many channels going through. Um, we do some navigation, which we do like a little search and rescue, which is just in class stuff. It's all just real one off lessons. Um, you know, someone's broken their leg, you go out and find them. How do you report back? Um, we do like a bit of amazing race treasure hunting. We do do uh, the following week, we'd look at a bit of native New Zealand, which is kind of environmental awareness. We would look at, um, you know, just native birds and animals, but we also have an environmental in initiative, which they have to put in place. So within our community, so it's a simple one is picking rubbish at the beach, but they also might want to go do chalk drawings on, um, on the path about, you know, awareness. And then the last one, once again, it's similar to the year nine. Uh, we like to finish on a high and we do fire making and they have to cook a full meal over fire and stuff like that. So. It is literally one off lesson, bang, 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 um, something fresh, something new every time. We are utilizing our environment, our, what we have, what we are allowed to do. And, but also we try to hook those kids in um, so that, that they want to do outdoor ed in our senior years, uh, year 12 and 13. We are going to be introducing outdoor ed to um, level one, not next year, but the following year. We are going to be taking those achievement standards and we are going to split them down. The, we'll basically do a PE version and we're going to do an outdoor ed version of them. So outdoor ed will be in level one. So there is, it's, it's, it's growing. I'm doing the best I can to make it as big and as big as possible. So yeah, it's not, you know, it's, it's short and sharp, but it's, 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 it, that's what our year nine and 10 program is. Awesome. Thank you, Joel. Sounds um, really busy up there and a lot to manage, a lot of different hats to juggle. So yeah, anyone um, have any questions there for Joel? Sweet, must have answered everything. Cool, yeah, if, if anything pops up, feel free to add it in the chats. But yeah, you, you did a great, um, great, encompassed it all <laughs> pretty well in there. And um, some, some awesome ideas that you've shared. So thank you. Um, awesome. Did you, I just had an email from Ben saying he had forgotten as well, Erin. So did you want to go next or, or later? Yeah, are you happy to? Cool. So we've got Erin um, Chapman from Whangarei Girls who is um, going to share with us about what they do. Yeah, I'm going to go see yeah. a crying baby. So thank you very yeah. much, everyone. Thank you very much, Joel. Yeah, uh, kia ora everyone. Yeah, I'm Erin. Um, I'm sole outdoor education teacher this year at Whangarei Girls and Ben, who we've been talking about, is um, likely to be back next year. I've got a new job down south. Um, but yeah, at Whangarei Girls, for the last three years, we've been running a Year 10 Duke of Edinburgh programme. So um, yeah, basically it's run over two terms. So we might run it in terms one and two or three and four. And um, the awesome thing about Duke of Edinburgh is they actually provide a lot of um, resources, especially for teachers who don't necessarily have um, a background in outdoor education. So they'll actually break down lesson plans um, and kind of go through all the um, kind of requirements. Um, and we bulk it up with a little bit more outdoor ed stuff as well. So um, some key things that we look at uh, obviously like leave no trace, kaitiaki tanga. Um, as a part of the Duke of Edinburgh Award, they need to do some service um, hours in the community. And so we try and um, organize some of that through our classroom lessons. So sometimes we go down the road, we've got a beautiful um, Pukanui Forest just across the road um, from our school. And there's lots of community groups that work in there. So sometimes we go and do a bit of cleaning up, um, weeding. We went and worked at the Quarry Gardens one time and I've looked at 
um, trying to get some trapping stuff going as well. So yeah, just coordinating a bit more with our local um, communities to kind of incorporate that into our program. Um, we also, one of our core um, themes is safety. So everything that we do, we're kind of teaching the students from that junior age around um, how they can have responsible behaviours um, to manage their own safety and well-being of others as well. Um, and then we also look at core skills around tramping. So for the Duke of Edinburgh Award, for those who might not know, um, they have to do an adventurous journey and generally at the year 10 bronze level they do that in tramping. Uh, so yeah we in terms in the first term they'll go and do a training day uh, tramp uh, with us and we contract other staff and for the numbers as well and we'll just go to the local um, forest and do a day trip. Um, skills around navigation, working as a group, um, you know stopping breaks, clothing, um, how to pack a pack, how to use the cookers and all that sort of stuff will come out either during that day or throughout the term um, and then we also run an overnight practice tramp and we have that in the Breamhead um, conservation area at Whangarei Heads and then we do an assessment tramp in the second term um, which is part of the award so it kind of ties in really nicely with outdoor education um, where else? And we also add in there a lot of survival stuff. So similar to what some of you guys have been talking about around fire lighting and um, looking at sort of basic first aid. Um, gosh, yeah, using using the cookers and what to carry, survival kits, all that sort of stuff. Um, and we also have a rock climbing wall and low ropes course at our school. Uh, so we teach them some basic concepts around safety, you know, how to belay, um, you know, some basics around holds and um, climbing movement on the wall and then that will kind of tie into the senior levels where they do more of performance-based um, learning and skills around rock climbing. Um, all the core stuff, interpersonal skills, leadership, all that great stuff that we do through PE and outdoor education. Um, doo -doo -doo. So um, one thing that our, our schools are also a donation school so we can only charge for accommodation and transport for overnight trips. Um, so for our Duke of Ed program, we charge the students $50 um, for the two terms, and that literally just covers transport and accommodation. Um, the only barrier really we've found with running at the Duke of Edinburgh course as a, as a course, not external to um, the curriculum, is that it actually costs $86 per student, and that's a a compulsory fee and so we've actually found in the last couple of years it's it's actually been a real barrier for one students wanting to take the course um, but also students success rate has actually not been that high um, in terms of completion um, and I've also had a few students that just didn't register um, they still came on all the trips and did all the learning through school which was being awesome but um, through discussion and a bit of reflection on that we've actually decided to um, start doing the Duke of Edinburgh as an extracurricular from next year onwards and we're gonna start doing an outdoor education program for year 10 so yeah wanted to be a part of this conversation just to get a few more ideas um, and we'll sort of change it up a little bit but yeah that's kind of one of the barriers we've found with the Duke of Edinburgh program just the cost really the admin cost of um, running it as a school and all the admin that you have to do online as well um, I don't know if anyone else out there is a award leader um, and oversees that kind of stuff um yeah that's kind of where we're at at the minute we don't have a year nine program we we trialed one for a year um it was a one-term program but myself and ben just found that we were out so much with our seniors that it was a little bit stink for the year nines um because they had a lot of relievers running the program so yeah that's me awesome thanks erin and thanks for sharing and it's it's really good to hear about the challenges as well with the the duke of ed um so yeah thanks for that does anyone have any questions um around Whangarei girls and the, the year 10 program cool there might be yeah if there's questions later again just feel free to put them in the chat or if they even if you have um other questions just chuck them in the chat and we can kind of if they're not um specific to um a certain program we can just bring them up at the end just if you want to write them down before you forget them then Go for gold. Um, but if we are good to move on, um, thanks very much for sharing, Erin. And we will 
move on to Johnny from Englewood College, um, who they run a six month junior module uh, that students can sign up for. So um, if you're happy, Johnny, I'll let you take Hey, Kia ora koutou. Um, thanks everyone for this korero, it's good to do and uh, um, I'm happy to do stuff afterwards too if you want some resources or to talk about things further. Um, hey, yeah, our students at Inglewood, sorry, high school and Taranaki is about 430. Um, so we have a small school and our juniors are growing and so students have been choosing their own modules that last six months for almost two years now. So we have students that want to be there, um, which is great because we can encourage them to do, um, to really push them, challenge them and say, hey, you've signed up to this. Let's go get wet, muddy, dirty and take risks. Um, and then the Fano kind of buy into that too, because we can say, here's your booklet. Um, this is what the module's about. If you don't want to do it, do a different PE or a different health or a different subjects module. And we can specialize in an area of PE. And all we have to do for school is meet key competencies um, throughout our module. So the assessments are all through key competencies like participating and contributing and stuff. Um, and we are, yep, six bumps. So we have eight lessons a fortnight of which one of those will be a double period. And so we can take them on a trip that second Thursday in a fortnight um, and we can leave at 11 and then come back at two or three, depending on the trip so I can get a whole day if I'm doing a summit attempt on Taranaki or I can just do two hours the local mountain bike trails um, depending on the trip um, so the theme is we're all about trying to get, have, help our students to um, develop their journey on the mountain and I can try and share with you a little screen thing if it will let me um, I'm not very good at Here we go. Okay, so uh, if you can see my screen, you've got, we have a, they have a manual and a booklet which they use to document their learning. Um, and the theme is all about um, whether they're on the slopes on climbing or near the summit. And we try and introduce using our own local Taranaki mountain to say, hey, if you're learning something, you'll be on the slopes. So if you're climbing, you should be consistent. And that's the general behavior we expect from our students is to be climbers or like, you know, well on the way. And then near the summit will be those that do things more consistently and then help others or be leaders. Um, so we use that simple rubric across all our PE modules. So this is actually a game on a different one where they just play games. And when we take it and apply it to Adventure Taranaki and the outdoor module that we do, but for every module they're doing, they can either be on the slopes, climbing or summiting, at some point during a trip, during a lesson, uh, during some planning or during uh, a reflection. And it gives them, they can come to this when they do a little reflection and we can say, hey, where were you? What have you got to do next? Um, and help them to say what they need to do next or stop doing or and why they are there. And it helps give us, when we're doing our classroom lessons, they can all come up with what they think a climber would be, what they think a summiter would be, and what they don't want a on the slopes person to be who's just at the beginning and how to help them progress so we can then use that as our positive behaviors for learning approach as well when something doesn't go to plan for them or for us and um, we can hopefully by the end of the module they're all climbing and summiting and organizing their own trips to the mountain bike trails they're organizing the trailer loading the unloading and washing the bikes and, do, and i just stand back and take photos um, or laugh and they have a bit more ownership over each trip so they can do it outside of school too. Um, right, let's stop the share. Um, what else? We actually charge students an opt-in charge. They opt into the module and then we charge them $80 for the six months. And we have had a surplus at the end of this year because we had a lot of parent helpers, parent support, offer a vehicle or a trailer or to come and join us on a mountain bike trail or a bushwalk. So we didn't have to spend so much money on mini buses as we thought we would. So when we could repair our bikes and that sort of thing. So we have a big gamble with, do we charge too much? Do we not charge enough? How many bikes are we gonna to have to repair? How many kids are gonna opt in and pay? Um, and that's a bit of a point of contention for us, but at the moment we're allowed to charge 
um, even though we haven't done the donations thing as a school. Um, so the $80, if every of the 24 students pays, means we can do nice things with nice gear. Uh, we don't do an overnight residential because we're just mm -hmm. trying to keep it simple and in school and keep costs down. Uh, we don't do water activities because we can have slightly larger ratios. And we have the mountain on our doorstep, so we use what we've got. Um, the activities, the students in theory can come up with themselves. So the first time we did this, we had a lot of farming kids who liked hunting and liked trapping. So they built their own traps, set them on a route in the local in the national park and had a look at them and monitored them and set them up around school as well. Um, but then they tried it again with the next cohort and they didn't want to have anything to do with trapping. They just wanted to go and climb the mountain. So we did lots of bushwalks and summited the mountain. Um, we try and get them to take on a bit of leadership and key competency stuff through ABL and through their planning. And so depending on the trip that's coming up, students will take on responsibility for organizing it. So the bikers do the biking and the walkers do the walking. And the year we have a year nines and tens, and actually some of the year nines shine and some get carried just like the year tens. So it's not an issue for us that we're mixed year groups. It just means that um, some can get carried a bit by those who are a bit more confident. Um, but I wouldn't say it's a year group issue. Um, we try and do as much practical stuff on site as we can. Um, so the students do some row games that we set up and then they set up their own. Um, we try and um, help them to, so it doesn't matter, like they can transfer the skills they learn in our module to the next module. So we try and be consistent with our assessments that it's all about where would you label yourself on the rubrics and on the mountain journey? And then what do you need to do to aspire? Um, so then, then they transfer to science or maths, they have the same assessment rubrics to look for um, and they can achieve. So we're kind of mirroring the same thing. Um, and yeah, um, we did the Hillary Get To Go Challenge as a term three trip, which was brilliant when they came to us. Uh, that was really great doing that Hillary Challenge because it involved the biking, row gain and team building that they are doing anyway. So I can recommend that as a, an option. Um, and one cohort did a nature trail cleanup and made one in, a, in the beach reserve. And so I'm learning how to do things that the kids want to do rather than what are my strengths, which is kayaking, ironically. Um, so I like to do more stuff with our cohort that involves the kaitiaki tanga and relating their whakapapa to their and their local adventures um so we're steering them to who are they what's their identity what makes them want to go out and do adventure as part of their journey and that's part of their reflective booklets that they do um but it's a long way to go i'm trying to get away from just trip 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 but even though they organize it i'm trying to make it into trip 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 but because they connect with where they've come from or where they could go and their culture so that's our challenge um, especially me being a converted POM into, um, you know, trying to bicultural teacher. So, yeah, thanks for letting me rant, preach. That's it. Awesome. Thank you, Tony. Great to hear about um, what you're Tony. doing down there. Um, do we have any questions for Tony? Oh, Tony? Tony? Sorry. <laughs> Right, Tony's my boss. I'm living it. <laughs> I'm Tony. I was going to say, I really like the, uh, the mountain analogy of you know, where they are, where they're on the slope. So that's, that's really cool. That's just so simple. And they can just, yeah, they can, that just works so well across multiple, multiple things. It's so clear. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm quite, be quite interested to see a little bit more about your, um, the journals that you've got, the reflective booklets. I made up one a couple of years ago as well to use part of my teaching practice. Um, but yeah, it'd be awesome to see a bit more of that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, a work, it's a work in progress where you're trying to avoid the PowerPoint, but, um, and so, or you're trying to let them avoid playing games on the computer, which we can't really track very well. So it's trying to get them also to do meaningful reflections on paper when they just write what, they know you want to hear or see and it's it's that's the challenge isn't it so uh, i can share i guess on some form of uh, powerpoint links and stuff we do somewhere it's not very anyway, who knows take what you want i can try and link it up to this um recording if that 
request something or okay or we could um yeah just get some emails and yep. email it through or something i can well, com communicate with with you about that if that's um oh, i could put it on a drive i guess if and there's oh, yeah. A... yeah which drive would that be um, we do. There is a. It's not an Eons drive, but um, I'll I'll send you a link and set it up, and then I'll send it out to this group. Um, if that sounds good, thanks for sharing. And yeah, the student choice part sounds really cool, and it's awesome that you kind of work to each cohort. Um, and how, you know what what fits with them, and um, and then awesome to hear about your own journey in terms of working towards that. You know, yeah. connecting more to Fuck Papa and um, and what you're doing there. So. Thanks for um, sharing. All right, next up, um, we have, I don't think we have Liam with us, do we? Can't see Liam or Jeff. Um, so Todd um, Woods from Altia College. Um, Good everyone. Um, yeah, so we've got a bit of an interesting situation with the whole junior program, to be honest. So I've just been at Altia two years now, but uh, I think maybe three years ago, they sort of gave in and they only have a half year um, compulsory core health and PE in year nine and 10. Um, it's, so the fight at the moment is trying to get that back to full year. But um, as part of that, they have op different options that we run, um, complete range in the um, health and PE side of things. And one of them we have is a, a year nine and 10, kind of sort of combined um, PE wild, we call it. Um, it's interesting, some classes will be a mixture of year 9 and 10, some my, mine this year, and these are half year options, sorry, too. Mine this year have been a year 9 purely in term 1 and 2, just the way it worked out, and then this half year I've got a purely year 10 course. Um, and when they put these courses together, there was no money in the budget for um, anything. So what I've sort of had to do um, is sort of we, when I set the, the senior, we have quite a few senior courses, which is great. Um, we call it PE Outdoors, and I've sort of had to, um, well, when I, when I do the budget for that, I try and put in a little bit now for the junior course, but then um, anything left over, I can use for the junior program. So a lot of what we do is at the end of the year. So unfortunately, like in the first half of the year and even in the second half until term four and, and the seniors leave, um, we don't we don't really get a lot of chance to get off site um, too far away from school. So the yeah, Aotea College people don't know is in Potiru and um, Wellington. So we try and use a lot of the local area we have. We've got a lagoon pretty close by, a little bit of orienteering around there. We've got a couple of little walks not too far away. We've got a um, sort of a bushwalk park, Bothanley Park close by, but we don't sort of have as much of a chance, like some schools, unfortunately, to sort of get out as often as we'd like. Um, in terms of the units that we run, we sort of do a, um, kind of an overall bushcraft unit. Um, we cover navigation, a bit of orienteering. Um, we get into a little bit of sustainability and we have tried to do a little bit of a, um, bit of a clean up around the area, around like Bothamley Park, around the lagoon. Um, some students really enjoy that. Some students, it's a bit of a, um, a challenge, but uh, it's part of what we do. Um, what else do we do? We do a bit of first aid, a um, little bit around weather. So I'm just going to quickly bring it up. Um, and yeah, and then so we, what, we, what I've started to do um, this year is we're going to be running a two day, well, really it's a three day, but a two day one night trip for all of our four um four classes um so my two classes this year will go on the first trip and then in the second day they'll swap over with another teacher rachel's two classes this is the first time we've done it i just was really frustrated not you know students opt in most of them opt in for the right reasons and we haven't really been able to offer them a lot so sort of moving forward my aim is to sort of build in more um, you know, like half day walk, uh, uh, half day trip to the beach to do some water safety. Uh, we're not too far away. It involves a bit of public transport. We don't really have vans. So it's about working out that in the budget. But um, yeah, a bit more of a few things during the half year and then building up to the trip at the end of the year because for the students who did in turn one and two, I'm finding now that the buy-in and the kind of enthousi enthusiasm around like wanting to do this 
um, camp is not there as much as it could have been if we had opportunities in the first half. But the camp uh, basically involves a sort of a walk into a campsite. They don't have to bring their gear. It's a bit of a three-hour walk on the ridge track into Kaitoki. Um, and then we just do some water safety, um, some bushcraft activities there. They get a bit of a, for some of these our students, it's the first time sort of been away on a camp. Um, so you get your yeah, sleeping tents, cook in groups. Um, sort of, I guess, just trying to get out of the out of the Potiro area, Potiro Basin. For some students, it's a bit of a barrier. They don't often get out of the local area, so it's kind of cool to still within keep within Wellington. But um, yeah, sort of been in the greater Wellington area out of, out of Potiro. Um, like a lot of what we try and do is and talk about is a, is within Potiro and sort of the local area. So one of our aims is sort of getting students to get out and about and see. Um, see the, the kind of place that they live. Some of them even still just kind of hang around um, some of the suburbs around school and actually don't get a chance to sort of go and see some of the, the local places. So it's a bit of a work in progress. Um, I would still love to do it even if we get a full health, core health and PE program back. But if not, it might be um, what I can't remember who was before said, talked about the um, four week modules within core program that might be where we have to go to if we um, are not allowed to keep the compromise might be you know getting rid of a few options to get a full year health and PE course and year 9 and 10 back but um, what I have found though is that students who generally do the junior courses are taking year 11, 12 and 13 so um, it seems that there is a bit of a flow on effect which is pretty positive but yeah, that's sort of a bit of an overview of what we do, um, but to work on, but we're slowly getting there. Awesome. Thanks, Todd. Sounds like you've got, got a few challenges there, but yeah. trying to work around them and make the most of it. Um, do we have any questions there for Todd? Cool. Alrighty. Great. Okay. Well, um, thanks for your time there, Todd, and your willingness to share. Um, and our last one tonight, uh, we've got a couple of people not here. So um, Tony, um, Tony Church from Kristen School, he is going to share with us the year nine um, one semester program. So I will pass it over to you, Tony. Cool. Thanks, Sophie. Kia ora, everybody. Um, Yes, yeah, my first year at Kristen. I've been around the scene for a, for a long time. I've worked with Steve in the past, and I've worked with uh, Whangarei Girls and with Aotea College. Used to organise your trips overseas uh, pre-COVID, uh, before all that whole industry uh, fell over. Um, so yeah, we run a Year Nine program for outdoor ed, and we run Year Twelve and Year Thirteen as well. Year Nine's a great taster, so it runs for two semester or one semester, so for half a year. So students opt into it, so they have their core subjects they have to do. And then with their options, they can choose to do a range of activities. So uh, our school's very, very academic based and there's a lot of focus around IB. So it's great to give them that real fun taster and get them off their screens. So as much as possible, get them into, all right, laptops, shut that lid. Let's go do stuff. Um, we're really fortunate at our school. We've got some pretty amazing facilities. So we've got a climbing wall, which is really awesome. We've got bush at the back of our school. Um, so we'll try and do a lot of things like um, yeah, using all our facilities as much as we can locally so we don't have to go to lots of places or we do have lots, lots of things nearby. Um, the way we organise it is we do three different lenses. We do a local lens, a regional lens and a national lens. So local, we look at our backyard, what's close to us, what do we have on site, what can we use? So it's real back to basic stuff around flax weaving, uh, making fire, cooking on fire. We do a camp called Less Is More. We, we do a bunch of activities during the day. They're in tribes. They've got their sign they carry around with them doing challenges go to different locations, and then they're in their spots in the bush, whereby they set up their own hammock, they set up their own tarpaulin over their hammock, and they sleep in that, in their, in their groups, they all cook an aspect of the dinner. So one group will cook chocolate cake, one will cook um, the, the rice and curry, one will cook the bread, and they will come together to share a meal. So that's a really, really cool one. So there's a lot of build up towards that in terms of just basically teaching knots and uh, those basic skills. Regional lens, we look at Auckland Regional Parks, so they do a planning assignment where they, whereby they plan to take um, their family to a regional park and they run a day for them. 
So we'll do an example where we get a winter home and we might go kayaking or hiking or something like that. And then the students run their own one and then they write a reflection about it, which they do as a, as a video reflection. So there's one assessment is yeah, the planning and then one assessment is the video reflection where they talk about their, their fun day out. Um, they, did, they, did they achieve their goals or did they not achieve their goals that were linked to park values? Um, what were improvements they would make? What was their worst part? What was their best part? Um, that type of stuff. And then we do national parks as well. So looking at national parks all around New Zealand, um, where they are in location, and we do a test on those in conjunction with um, marine reserves. So activity-wise, yeah, we do things like some canyoning locally in a local stream, absent of some waterfalls, um, kayaking, hiking, scuba, snorkel, um, rubbish trips as well in terms of learning about waste management and, and um, less is more and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, try and keep it really practical, really interesting. And just as off screens as much as possible, just that contrast between the rest of their subjects. So I'll see this year, well, so first semester we run it, uh, we go national, regional, local, and then semester two we go the opposite way, we go local, regional, national, just because of the seasons and because of the weather. So we sort of run it in the opposite direction to make the most of um, weather and, and activities. Obviously with lockdown, it's been pretty interesting trying to keep doing lots of fun outdoor stuff um, over a computer screen. So we've been using Flipgrid a lot and seeing a lot of Flipgrid challenges whereby students can go film themselves doing an activity. So like a knot-tastic challenge where they've got to film themselves doing so many knots in one minute or they've got to set up a home shelter. So it was like, you can do it inside, you can do it outside, you can use a tarp or a tent or you can use a fort and make it inside using blankets and under your dining room table or, or whatever. Film your set up, take your dog out with you, do whatever. So just trying to yeah, keep them engaged in that. Um, flax weaving as well. So yeah, encourage them then to, you know, give them a series of YouTube videos or links to go utilize and hey, go find some flax, go hunt some down, get some harakiki and create different things and do a show and tell. So all those different kind of, yeah, things you can set them for a challenge for a week. Hey, here's what you've got to do this week. Go film it, do it whenever suits you rather than having it in a set time where we're going to sit and work on something together. Yeah, or just even just, right, your, your task today is go outside for 10 minutes and lie on the ground and look at the clouds. What shapes can you see? What's that, you know, those like those um, five, four, three, two, ones, like five things you can see, four things you can hear, three things you can smell, two things you can, you know, with your senses, just some of that connection stuff to try and keep them really involved. Um, yeah, so yeah, as I say, so year nine, um, six month program, basically year 10 and 11, there's some elements of outdoor in like sports studies and PE. Uh, before they lead into year 12 but a lot of them when they choose to do outdoor ed, outdoor ed in year 12 we were 13 they talk they come back to what they did in year nine and that's part of the motivator for them is why they did it is because they had such a blast year nine they love that back to basics approach because they just never get to do and they get to light fires or hey here's a knife get your knife license go off and use that knife and here's how you do it and they love it because they're so sheltered and they're so bubbled and they're so on screens all the time so it's such a great contrast to that at my school anyway um to go and go and get wild a bit um yeah no it's so good for them awesome thanks tony um sounds like there yeah it's been a challenge with um lockdown for you guys up in auckland and i feel for all the the auckland and waikato at the moment schools um it sounds like you're doing a great job coming up with some creative ideas um and for those of you interested in that the less is more um I actually had a, a chat with Derek, who also teaches outdoor ed um, at Kristen, and he shared a bit more detail about the less is more um, journey, and that will um, we'll put that up on the website soon, um, along with a few other um, interviews with other teachers who are running journeys in their senior outdoor ed programs. So keep an eye out for that. Um, do we have any questions for Tony? I just want to say I do love the video assessment idea. It's a great way to get a bit more creative with things. Um, oh, it's so much easier to mark. <laughs> it's like, yeah. right, it's been there for four minutes max and they sit there and it's like, here's what you need to say. Boom, yep, they said that, they said that and they can just blah, 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 blah. Some pretty pictures, take some photos and a lot of them loved it with, with lockdown because yeah. um, yeah. it was like, get out once, you know, when the lockdown was changed, it was like, go out with your family. And for so many, a goal was, 
go do something with their family outside of a house, go out with their bubble. So it was great for them to get out and have a motivator to, hey, mum, we have, dad, we have to go and do something. Yeah, awesome. Cool, yeah, thanks. Thanks so much for that. Um, any, so we, no questions for Tony there? Um, and we, we've just had um, one more person. Uh, Vicky has said she is happy to um, share a little bit about Makoto College. It's their first year offering year nine and 10 um, outdoor ed. Um, so she's just going to share a little bit about that. Um, and I am recording this, so if people do need to leave, feel free to just um, sneak off. It's all recorded. But um, if you are happy to share that, Vicky, I will let you take it away. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. I'll uh, try and keep it quick. So um, we have offered senior outdoor ed for quite a long time, and we've been pushing to try and get something going in a junior school. And this year, um, we were given the option of running a year 10 outdoor program. Um, we've got two semesters, so it's a semester program, two terms, um, and it was optional. Um, the students chose it and we ended up with um, way more students than we were expecting. And we ended up actually splitting them into three groups. So the first semester was one group and then the second semester we actually had two or have two classes running um, to cater for the numbers. And the brief was basically just to give them um, an introduction to outdoor ed, um, a taster of a whole load of different activities and to get them, you know, working together and all, all the kind of the usual objectives. So what we decided to do was have a bit of a theme. And in the first term, we went for water and wheels. Um, whilst the weather was quite warm, we took them um, on, on the lake that we've got here in Masterton, we did a dragon boat taster session and we did a walker armor taster session. And then we looked at water safety and we ended up with a day out at the beach surfing. Um, so we got someone in to come and do the surfing with them. But the other two, luckily, we've got people on site that are involved with those disciplines. So we were able to run that ourselves. Um, we also then moved on to biking. Uh, starting off with just kind of locally around the lime tracks around the town um, and then on to some a little bit further afield with a few little hills and teaching them the basic skills um, getting a good idea of what they were like on bikes and obviously there was the complete range from those who barely ridden a bike through to those that had their own bikes and were pretty competent so that took a little bit of managing um, progressing through to a day where we do a bike trip. So with the first group, we did the Rimataka incline, um, which they really enjoyed, but it's a bit of a mission in terms of transport and shuttles and the rest of it. So this time around, we're going a bit more local um, to one of our local hills, the Rangitumo. And there's an old paper road there that you can do, um, which is a lot easier to actually manage the trip. So um, the biking part of it has proved one of the more difficult to manage just because of the nature of 14 year old boys on bikes and um, yeah kind of following the rules but it's been interesting it's been an eye opener and then the second term we've focused more on navigation and tramping and a bit of climbing so the navigation was mainly in the form of different kind of orienteering rogaine type activities started off with one actually in the school grounds then we had one just around the local streets and then we had one around the park um, so gradually getting further afield and different types of maps each time um, through from just kind of using google earth through to using a proper orienteering map um, the tramping, we, the intention was to do like a day tramp and then an overnight, but the weather didn't really come to the party for that. So um, we did a lot of preparation. We've done all the things in class around packing packs and cooking on stoves and that kind of thing. The day tramp that we were due to do this term, we had to can because it was severe weather warnings. So we ended up going down to the local camp and doing just activities out of there. So we still did some cooking, we still did, uh, we did some kind of stretcher building, things like that, and a whole load of ABL games. They still came in all their gear. We just didn't actually do the tramping part, but we did last week manage to do the overnight trip. 
So it was a little bit, we weren't sure how it would go with them not having a day tramp to practice, but they actually did really well. We did spend a lot of time with them beforehand um, on gear and checking it before we went. And so we went up Mount Holdsworth, um, stayed in Powell Hut overnight and came down the next day and they loved it. Um, a lot of them didn't think it was something they could achieve, um, but it's kind of our, our local manga. So yeah, that was really cool. And then kind of interspersed in between that, there's bits of going to the local climbing wall um, and looking at leave no trace and kind of things that we can fill in in the classroom with the skills based side of it. So it's been really interesting. They're keen. They've offered the course again next year. Um, when we started at the start of the year, they told us that we had a budget of a thousand dollars and we used that in the first semester and then we had two more groups to go. So we went back to the principal and said, look, you want us to run this course um sorry this is this is what it's costing because you know there's they kind of had all these ideals but hadn't looked at how much supervision we would need or where we would get that supervision from or what relief they would have to provide to actually make sure competent people were going so um i think it was a well-meaning hoff who's no longer there who thought it would be great to get the course started but hadn't actually kind of worked out all the nuts and bolts but Fortunately, we've got very supportive um, SLT. So yeah, they've, they've kind of stuck with us with that. And then just quickly with the year nines, um, it kind of came about that um, we have a homeroom system for our year nines and I was timetabled for some to cover some teacher release time. And so basically um, we had a year nine camp in term one, which we've been trying to get going again for a long time and that was quite successful and then after that they said for your release time how about we give you a group of year nines that are you know have shown to be keen on the outdoors and you do something outdoorsy with them is what they said and so it was a pretty much um blank page um but we were really lucky to join up with a local person who's um he's working for an initiative through the iwi it's called moko moko and um, there's, I think there's one in Taranaki that's similar um, and it's supported or it's started by DOC, supported by the iwi and it's all around the environment and the waterways and looking at um, what happens to the waterways, um, focusing on some of our local rivers, learning about what lives in them and it's a, what, what they've been doing is a combination of um, stream cleans of water testing and monitoring of looking at learning about some of the wildlife um, we've been out to the water treatment plant um, we're doing a walk in the river later on this term but then also some artwork as well because the person running it is a, um, a potter so we've been making ceramic fish and eels and all those kind of things so it's quite a neat program and very different to um, the rest of what they do but quite a good introduction to getting outdoors um, ready for the more adventurous stuff later on so hopefully we'll be able to work with him again next year um, he basically facilitates it and i support so um, it's not too much planning on my side for that as well and yeah that's it awesome thanks Vicky thank you for sharing that and um yeah sounds really cool and lots of interesting things going on down that way and you've got a, a great um you know the tararoas on your doorstep which is pretty special really cool thing um any questions there for Vicky Cool, and um, Steve, I'm not sure what school you're at, but um, he just put a message there that um, he's happy to share. So since we've got you here and we're recording, we might as well hear what's going on hey, there. Sorry, I'm, I'm on my phone. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Go for hey, uh, welcome, Tony, Joel, etc. other um, people that I know. I'm one of the teachers at the Dilworth Rural Campus, which you may or may not be aware of, is a year nine uh total immersion program for the whole year where boys that are at the, from Dilworth come here for the whole of year nine i've been one of the foundation teachers for, uh, here for the last 10 years i should probably not be talking about it one of my colleagues should be but he's not able to make it so in a nutshell three strands um academic uh outdoors and personal social growth um a lot of overlap with uh, Tihoi or uh, Kahanui, so Catholic Girls Program, or 
T Hoy St Paul's Collegiate program and uh, from based out of Hamilton. Although T Hoy's down in Lake Taupo. Boys come for a year. I'm not sure if you were dealt with, but it's uh, boys from uh, on full scholarship from less fortunate backgrounds. Everything's provided, paid for, equivalent to about I don't know thirty five, thirty six thousand dollars a year. Um, the boys come in here for the, as I say, year of whole night, year of whole of year nine from having been in Auckland, but the boys come from all around of New Zealand. Uh, we take them, they live in cabins of 10. They do their own laundry, their own cleaning. They help cook in the kitchen. It's a whole sort of immersive uh, environment with uh, so much overlap of everything that you guys have shared. They've been super interesting um, and certainly more converse conversation to come forward. With regard to the outdoors, staffing wise, um, teachers are outdoor instructors and outdoor instructors are teachers. And they do the pastoral role because the boys are weekly boarders. They come on a Sunday, leave on a Friday, go home, come back again. Uh, outdoors wise, we run a two week timetable. Every other week, the boys go outdoors. We've got equipment for, we've got space for 100 boys, so about 50 boys. When they're not outdoors, so Monday, Tuesday, academic days, which is ranges a full program from, you know, literacy or English, uh, math, numeracy, science, matai, TR Kori, PE, music, etc., social studies, Te Reo Māori, um, Te Kanga Māori, etc. Um, full infusion. Uh, integration across the board where we can. On Wednesday, Thursdays, academic lessons, but the boys go outdoors in groups of typically 10. So it's five groups of 10. Um, when they're not outdoors, the other half are in doing project based learning, um, passion based projects, etc. Uh, and in a nutshell, Friday, they come back academic, go home on the weekend. And then week B is the rotation. Monday, Tuesday is the academic. Wednesday, Thursday, those are outdoors. Week A are in school, and those that are in school, week A go out week B. Disciplines that we use, uh, we start with cabin tramps, boys to get to know each other, um, and then we sort of build in capacity over the year. Uh, so all the equipment's provided from the jockeys they wear to the toothpaste they use. So tramping boots, gear, fleece packs, backpacks. Uh, we offer sea kayaking, tramping, uh, mountain biking, climbing, uh, bushcraft, you know, the whole connection to place, uh, less is more, that, a lot of those overlaps there. Um, Water-based activities, you know, swimming, or those type of things. Uh, journey start local and the local Hanua areas. We travel to the Kaimais. We sea kayak in the Firth of Thames up around uh, the local Haraki Gulf. Um, the access Kaimais, uh, can expedition down to uh, rock climbing around Auckland when you can access it, etc. And things aren't closed. So using indoor facilities, say Northern Rock, etc. Or the senior campus has got an indoor wall um to uh accessing central north island fatty papa frogger etc um we have sea kayak down like Katapira, even though it's not obviously a sea um tramping caving sometimes boys go on a journey they experience two rotations at least of those disciplines we do involve a 24 hour solo that they build up towards to, uh, reflecting on the end of the journey very much about peaks and troughs experiences that you've got to go through the highs and the lows they have a journal that they reflect in there are weekly notes on how boys have performed, which we feed forward um, into the whole uh, managing self, key competency, uh, and the personal social growth program, which is facilitated through the cabins and cabin life, and also through the outdoors and academic lessons. Um, the uh, pinnacle of the year is a five-day expedition where they choose a discipline they want to take part in. That could be a sea kayaking expedition, which is normally really popular to biking. Uh, biking, we access things earlier on in the year, such as um, local areas, uh, the Haraki Plains Trails, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, sleeping more lifestyle, a lot of places, camping, all those different types of things, depending on the weather, we've got flexibility. We do travel. Sometimes we're traveling out for two and a half hours at times. Um, on a Wednesday morning, come back Thursday afternoon, which is quite a bit, but you know, that is what it is. Um, around the mountain, tramps, that kind of thing. Uh, tramping down in Firinaki Forest, different aspects like that. Um, caving expeditions, etc. Pulling in external providers when we don't have the skill set in, uh, on site to be able to do that. We've got some very highly qualified staff um, with several employees from ranging from, I don't know, Rock One to Bush Two to Sea Kite One and Two, etc. Um, at the end of the year, they do an awesome five day journey back where they walk out the rural campus and they walk back to the senior campus in Auckland, which is obviously not happening this year. We managed to pull it off last year. Uh, and that journeying over the years has taken the form of walking, biking, sea kayaking one year. And then we sort of dialed it back last year to walking and they walk up through the Hanoas, 
cleaved in around there, but I tie, ended up catching a ferry from Pine Harbour, downtown Auckland, to walk up to the senior campus to be to welcome in Pofuri aspect of that journey. I've summarised 10 years of being here in a very short time. I'm sorry if I've gone on, but heaps of overlap with what we're talking about. Use of uh, reflective journals, rubrics for marking performance. Uh, online learning has hit us this year. We've just found out on Sunday that our boys aren't coming back, so pretty gutting for them, these key events they're missing out on because the majority are Auckland-based. So it's everything's been a shift. It's definitely affected what these boys get to do, but there is a transition phase as well. 2022 is the last year of the year nine rural campus. After that, I think that there's a review going on and the plan is to hit multi-year groups. So exciting stuff for Dilworth School there. Um, so it's from year seven to 13, there's gonna be sort of stepping stones there or a scaffolding approach. Um, yeah, happy to answer questions, provide any thoughts, et cetera. Sorry for ranting on. No worries, thank you, Steve. Uh, thanks for sharing. And that journey back to school sounds pretty special for um, for the boys. Um, do we have any questions there for Steve? It'd be pretty nice if uh, all our young men got to experience um, something like that. Um, cool, if we don't have any questions, um, I can see that uh, Jeff has just joined us. Um, who is from Mana College? Um, are you are you there, Jeff? Do you want to? Sorry, I'm late. I was no. uh, yeah busy. No worries at all. No worries at all. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, Jeff's at Mana College. Um, is Mana College in Porirua? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. in Porirua, and um, he's got some pretty cool things going on there. So. Um, you don't currently have a junior program, but you did a couple of years ago, is that right? Oh, um, not not so much a program, just a uh, nothing on the scale of what I've just heard. Oh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But um, just uh, a little uh, term-based thing uh, that we did. I just got the kids just uh, visiting local areas and um, taking photos and um, reflecting on where they'd been and just being in the places in the local area, the beach, the, the bush, the harbour, the local hills around here. Yeah. Awesome. That's what did I really you... did at the junior school. But we have got uh, expiration days uh, within our uh, junior programme, which isn't necessarily an outdoor ed programme that kids choose, like English, maths or science. But it is a, um, it's instead of a camp. So mm -hmm. we, we do a lot of place space. So it's a... Um, we really work on the, like who we are, where we are and what, what the kids can do in the place. And so instead of a, um, a $25,000 camp and charging every kid, we make it free. And the kids experience a rotation of three different things over three days. And we really involved our, our tūkana, our year 12 and 13 leaders. And they come along with the, um, well, we call it learning advisory groups, but, um, it's a uh, more like you know like a form class or some kind of school called Ako or that, that sort of thing, um, and they go on uh, they spend the day at the marae and learn all the mythology and uh, waiata and um, karakia and haka of the school and the significance of the school attached to Ngāti Toa uh, because we're on Ngāti Toa land, and um, then on the second day we go exploring around uh, our local Maunga, Whitirea, uh, and there's a bit of, uh, you know, uh, natural senses type stuff, just experiencing the place that we're in. And um, then they have a bit of fun and muck around in uh, old opties and make sandcastles and try and uh, link back what they've um, been talking about or heard, heard about on the marae and the local island trip. Um, and reflect back on that and make sandcastles and uh, different um, uh, patterns and whatnot in the in the sand. And then on the third day, they go out to, the, it was Mana Island, but that's been uh, canned this year because of the a, uh, a tour operator can't go out anymore. So we're going to Kapiti Island this year and we have our local Ngāti Toa iwi. They run that whole process and um, link everything back into, you know, how important uh, their places and why Mana College is so important and why it's so why they're so uh, lucky to be where they are. Yeah. 
So all year nine's experienced that uh, with their tukana, and but we don't necessarily have a, an outdoor ed program at the junior school. Yeah, we try to link back what they learn on that, uh, those three days back into the general curriculum. Yeah. Kia ora, Jeff. Thank you for sharing um, some really cool um, uh, connection that you've got uh, going on there. And I've talked to Jeff a little bit about his senior outdoor uh, programs as well. And he's um, yeah, got some awesome awesome ideas and, and things going on, um, really connecting those students to their place and getting that strong sense of where they're from. So um, maybe we can can chat a bit further sometime, uh, Jeff, about your, your senior program and share that with some of these guys because I was pretty inspired. Um, do we have any questions there for Jeff? <laughs> cool. All right. Um, we do. We've got a few questions um, in the group, so I'll go to those in a second. Um, but again, uh, before that, I just want to say thank you so much to um, everybody for sharing um, what they're doing in their schools. Um, it's awesome to just hear a range of what's happening across the country and some things will resonate with you and give you some ideas and um, and it's just great to have that range. So um, thanks for making the time and effort um, to, to be willing to put yourself out there because um, it's not always easy to share and um, but you know in the end it's all for all for the kids or for our kids of Aotearoa. Um, so um, there was a question, if you do have any other questions or anything you want to discuss as well, feel free to just um, jump in. Uh, hey, so um, um, thanks for the contribution tonight. I'm fairly new to outdoor education, um, still being a PCT at the moment or finishing up this year. Um, but I was just wondering, is anyone assessing at the end of like the subunits within a course for either year nine or year 10? Because we have um, year nine and year 10 outdoor education for options. So it's just an opt-in um, choice that they can do. Um, and I'm just wondering, yeah, um, like we do the basics, navigation, uh, we do like an environmental care. And so at the end of each kind of mini unit, we'll do an assessment and we've tried to move away from the whole achievement or excellence, but I'm just curious if anyone else is even assessing or testing knowledge. I don't know. Yeah, feel free to jump in there, whoever's got um, anything to add in there. Tony, look like you had something. Uh, you're on mute. Yeah, yeah we, so we do um, three, uh, three of the four criteria. So we do criteria A is knowledge. So that's a test. So around um, national parks and marine reserves. Then we do crit, crit um, B, which is the planning around the regional park day out that they plan to go do. And then crit, criteria D is a reflection one, which is they reflect upon their planning and their day out. So we do those ones at the end of each semester. So rather than a, an activity base as such, it's yeah, we're based on those three things. Um, and with lockdown, we can't assess, if we can't assess it, we do more of a, um, we use some of those things like those Flipgrid videos to see if their engagement and their attendance and we, and we get an assess grade from that. Um, hey, Caro, uh, we assess through our key competencies. So one way a student can get good grades in managing self key competency is uh, how will they contribute over a few lessons. Um, it could be row gain, it could be team building, and it could be work in the classroom. Um, and then there's a rubric which they've helped create or we scaffold, and then they can see where they are or what they need to do. And then they get a grade based on that. Um, and then another key competency like participating and contributing, they can get a score or they can do their mountain bike booklet so that brings in symbols, language and text and also uh, observations when they're riding on the trails, how they help others, how they help themselves. And so it's our, all our observations and then our little teacher comments um, that go into reports as well. But they don't have to go on the trips to pass or achieve good grades um, because it's all based in with our rubric rather than it's not about the trip itself. Awesome, thanks, Johnny. Does that um, answer some questions there, Cairo? And 
yeah, all good. I just, yeah, um, was kind of just interested to see um, where the direction of that is because obviously it's not something that's entirely measurable um, always unless you're doing, yeah, a, 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 a test basically and I want to veer away from that as much as possible in terms mm. of like just building individual development like on the rock climbing, what does it mean, you know, if someone's achieving better than what they started, um, that type of stuff. But yeah, yeah, thank you. So many different ways to look at it as well, um, focusing on on key competencies and other aspects of the curriculum in, in a more practical sense as well. Um, any any other questions there or um, discussion points? I've just got something to add for um, Ricardo. Uh, so we also link ours to our school values. So we've got um, Manaki Tanga, Fenona Tanga and Kotahi Tanga. So whenever the, the girls go out and do um, activities, we get them to reflect back on either to start off with how they think they're going to demonstrate it. And then also when they come back, actually being able to give specific examples of how they did actually um, show their values. And then, um, like Johnny was saying too, we also link it back to our key competencies, um, mainly the managing self, are they bringing the gear, are they prepared to do the trips, um, you know, that we're going on. Um, and then there's a little learning journal, um, kind of after each unit, which it kind of allows them to reflect on kind of what they've learned, kind of what they do um, differently. So it's kind of a bit of a, a wholesome kind of grade um, from a multitude of different things. Awesome, thanks Emily. Any other um, additions there? Cool, any other um, areas of discussion, other points? Cool, alrighty. Um, and I can see we've got something else in the chat there around um, vaccination requirements. Um, so yeah, there'll, there'll probably be some clarity around this um, out from Fiona, I would say fairly soon. So just yeah, keep your eyes on um, the EON's um, updates and um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep you posted. So yeah, thanks, thanks everyone for coming tonight. Um, I will stop the recording there.